Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Ah, I'm back already after two days. You already brought me back. Yeah. Look well, at we this. don't know. We don't know when this stuff airs, yeah. really. So it could have been. Months. I suppose. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Is this for the most biggest piece of shit humans yeah. on the planet here? Yeah. Come on. Marhaba. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> ah, there he is. There's Mandeville. You're looking we- more and more like Randy Quaid every day. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, just fuck yeah. Let's just do it. Which is Hold funny. On. Okay. Yeah, there it is. We've got a fucking character that we want Randy Quaid to play. It's called Jack Off Man. Yes, <laughs> we do. Uh, Wait, he, who's this based on? Uh, we just made it up. Okay. But it's he ejaculates venom, and that's his superpower. So... Uh, it's acidic venom, and it burns through things, and that's what he does. The problem is that, uh, you know, that's not really applicable to anything. <laughs> There's no real no. use for it. Uh, and he wears, like, his, his costume was a onesie with a flap in the front. Because you got to get the dick out, obviously. Yeah, I mean, throw out that little dick. Yeah, well, yeah you got to throw out the little dick. Yeah. You throw out the little dick. We got, look, we got Derek Wida. We got Jack Mandeville in the house. Uh, we're really firing on, on all f- cylinders today. We've been drinking for how many hours? I know. Now I, I got to be honest with you. I, I I woke up this morning. I I woke up late. I, I I never wake up late on a Monday. I slept through my alarm. I woke up. I went and hit my chest workout, and then I just can't, I haven't eaten yet. I've been drinking, and uh, so be careful what you get out of me today. Oh, all of us. I am at. I'm past the point where I give a shit. Are we gonna so, have like a Michael Richards incident? I, I, or? Don't, <laughs> I don't know who she is, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Michael what, Richards what, thing was still the end all be all. What's up? What's no up, one's what's ever up gonna, Michael Richards. Uh, Michael Richards was Kramer. Kramer. He was Kramer. Oh. And then he did a, a stand up show, which he's not a stand up comedian, right? Mm-hmm. He was being heckled by some, some uh, African American gentleman. Sure. He proceeded to fire off about 17 N words. Well, wh- wait. In With no the, context. It was just anger. None. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Wait, you need context to say the N-word? Well, I mean, no. he wasn't reading no. Huckleberry Finn or anything. <laughs> no, yeah. no, that's what I'm saying. Like, he was not. Those were angry N-words. Okay. Yeah, no. and then afterwards, he tried to apologize. And they were like, hey, man, yeah, it's no. just, you're yeah, pretty racist. Yeah. It's not like part of anything. Mm. And that's kind of what it was. But Jack, you're your best life right now. I'm doing. I'm not, well. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, when you say hanging. I'm, in I'm there, glad yeah. you gave me that much credit, Ross. I <laughs> appreciate that. When you say hanging in there, you mean like uh, like normally or like Anthony, not like 22, like, like Anthony like, Bourdain. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm about to go. I like how we're two minutes in. You've yeah, already yeah, dropped yeah, a yeah. veteran suicide joke. No. I sat in the 20 second roll in the way over here. No joke. Like, that's all I could think about the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, like a, it's it's down to twenty. Are, are you not do you, like it's only twenty push ups now? So, so like, <laughs> all yeah. those push ups paid off. You have to yeah, do yeah, less. Yeah. Good job, veterans. Good job. Good job. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, we're all here for Shot Show. Mm-hmm. It, it it brings together all walks of life for different things, elements. You're having a rap battle. Is that true? Yeah, me and uh, the Velvet Dame, Jared's ex. We are going to be uh, going toe to toe. Where is this at? Uh, at the Mandalay Bay at the House of Blues. No, what? Hold on. You're yes. playing the, you're playing this the is house. real. When is this? Uh, tomorrow night. No shit. I think, I think we're on going a up Tuesday. Or so, yeah. I love the House of Blues. That's where I uh, met Danny for the first time from Asking mm-hmm. Alexandria. I love going there. You're playing on the stage. I want on the same stage as Danny. Big uh, rap battle. Guns and Roses used to play there. Dibs really? The, oh yeah. I want to. I want to play the winner. I, I, saw... I can rap battle. No, I can't. Do, do you freestyle? No, man, I've got this whole thing written out, but honestly, I'm like we were talking about earlier, I may just bomb on purpose to yeah. see how far I can take this. Yeah. So, Norm MacDonald style. Yeah, yeah, I love Norm MacDonald. Like, he bombs on purpose, and it's an art to do that, but it is, uh, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, and he's one of those guys who lives in the comfort of that moment. Yeah. Where bombing is his best, and he'll keep pushing it mm-hmm. as far as as far as we'll go. The problem is, most people, comedians, get they're so cringed inside that they're like, all right, I got to go to a go-to joke. If you just keep going and continuously <laughs> bomb, I'm like, still going to get paid. No. I'm still yeah. going to get paid. I'm no. still going to get paid. Do well. It's nice to be liked and do good. Like, Oh, people already <laughs> hate me, so yeah. <laughs> They're not going there for me. Uh, wh- who hates you? Well, I, I don't you know. I, I think people, are, I think people are going you. there. Yeah, they want to see pretty ladies. Oh, it's fuck, Vegas. Like, no, I, I, I want to love see, you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. you cannot. Where are you from in Minnesota? 
uh, the suburbs, Maple Grove. God damn, I we fucking had different hate upbringings. you. Yeah, same fucking, state, different upbringings. I hate you. I both, hope you. Yeah, both you guys tomorrow. are from Minnesota, right? Yeah, yeah but you he's betcha. fucking like. But I'm from goddamn the east side of St. Paul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he grew up around the immigrants. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. What's that yeah. sitch like? Is that why well, you like, ended up with face tattoos? <laughs> Yeah, because, because of the yeah, immigrants. Yeah, yeah like, I don't like too many snots. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Lee to see Beaver, that Minnesota. Move? I yeah. Yelled back. yeah, no, yeah, I grew up on the east side of St. Paul in Maple Grove. That's a lot of white people and money. A lot of white people, a lot not, of money. Not yeah. bad, not bad. Yeah. yeah, a lot of wholesomeness. Yeah, I don't no, like that. I wasn't there. Yeah, no, I had a wonderful childhood. You did. And it was I amazing. Met your parents. Yeah, but look how you turned <laughs> many out. Many times. Yeah, and yeah. then how? Did, yeah. How did you turn exactly like Dan said? How the fuck did you turn? Because like it was this? like typical white kid shit, where like I was told how smart and wonderful and kind yeah, I was so, so much that so, I never learned boundaries. After so that. here, yeah. here's the thing: like Stacy wants to leave Nevada because she says this uh, the school system here in Nevada. Because we have they have one year old twin boys, and we're talking about like their future and shit like yeah. that. And Nevada is ranked like 49. Yeah, they're like close to the worst. Out of you know, but but like Actually, I states, went yeah. to Johnson the High si- School. The city of Las Vegas is the worst. It doesn't in the get worse than Johnson High School in fucking Minnesota, right there. Like no, but the Minnesota public schools compared. Compared to the majority of the country, are still exponentially better. Yeah, but I went to Johnson. I, oh, I, I know. Just, I, I just went to like a shitty school. Was, so like my thing is like Stacy wants to leave because the school system here is poor. But I went to a shitty school, and I think that gave me a good fucking education. Like I grew up like white people were kind of the minority where I grew up. There was more black people, Mexican people, and Asian people. And, and I just so is Dan's upbringing, by the way, right? So like yeah, I'm not a, a fucking though. racist. Yeah person because i grew up and i just never gave a shit and everybody you know so i don't know yeah dan, but, yeah. dan had a similar situation yeah it's, i mean really just exposure to different types of uh yeah cultures and ideology at a young age yeah will break you of that nonsense yeah i grew up like, around norwegians <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but norwegians typically aren't very hateful either no 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 no. it was actually a very uh it's like that um they just don't really care about that it, religious you know? it's like religious liberals up there i don't know how to explain the culture mm. up there yeah. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah, it's not like uh, the Southern Baptist kind of religious people. They're like super liberal Christians up there. Yeah, it's weird when I uh, when I drive thirty five north coming into Minnesota there, because like, I lived in Denver for a while and I drive from Denver back to Minnesota, and then you get in Minnesota, and then there's all these billboards that's like. Jesus fucking hates you. I'm like, what? What did I do? Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Really? Yeah, like yeah, in Minnesota. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, well, it feels yeah. good to be a Christian the but farther luckily, north you go. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luck, luckily, they only really believe in white, blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, which is not a real thing. So yeah. it's like, right. I mean, it's pretty, all bullshit. So. You pretty much skip uh, that. You can't you do, say that on this show. You do get the fish <laughs> yeah. fry, though, yeah. on Fridays. You can't oh, say that on this show. You can, yeah. though. No, I, look, yeah. whoever your Jesus is, right, yeah. is, is your color. Jack. I've been to uh, some of my black friends. Their houses, they get a black Jesus like in the, in the house. White friends has got a, a white blue eyed Jesus, but truthfully, he's they have a Middle Eastern. They right? have Arab Jesus. Yes. I was in Amman, Jordan, yeah. and they had uh, big fat Arab dudes dressed as Santa Claus out there. I'm yeah. going to get Jack Jesus. What a Jack uh, Jesus? Yeah, I, would, I, I, would, I would pay for a Jack Jesus. Actual Jesus was Arab yeah. Jesus. We, though. Let's let's shoot pass, reshoot Passion of the Christ, and you play Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Down a oh, fat God. Jesus, thin, yeah, hanging on the cross, <laughs> oh, just keeps God. eating. Uh, no. No, yeah. Do another no. one. But you, uh, you keep uh, trying uh, to get out of it. And stuff. <laughs> I don't want to make any sacrifices. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I don't care about any of your sins. Any more food? Like you get fucking hammered the night before and sleep until noon and miss the crucifixion. <laughs> 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 and then all of humanity goes to hell because yeah. of you. Thanks a lot, Jack. Yeah, piece of shit. <laughs> you fu- I have no thanks retort. For, thanks don't. for nothing. <laughs> you don't. So I just saw you just came back from a USO tour, Jack. Uh, you've been yes. over there twice now in the last with the American Hitman, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. S- Saint or Salt Lake based. Yes. Yeah. You were shirtless a lot. It's part of my shtick. I, I actually had the easiest job in that entire tour. Those guys would go up there, and every night they'd play two hours of like hard rock music, and then I'd have to go up for the last five to ten minutes, do a little shtick up there, and then I would do the last song with them. And it was it's essentially like a strip tease. I strip down into nothing but underwear at the end, and I always have something written on my stomach, and that's my job. You it's know, fun as it, shit. You it's know great. what? I've been I, I like why? What 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 do I got to do to get on a USO tour? 
I, I I've been trying for a long time. I if, think I, I, I think go if you can go overseas. on stage and grow your leg back, that yeah. would be really inspirational. I know, like I want to go back over and you I gotta have a trick. You gotta have a special. You gotta do something. You got to go on a USO tour. It's a AFE tour. It's like the government version of the USO. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've done three so far. Pretty yeah. lucky. Yeah. I'm yeah. jealous. Is that something My, you're interested I'm, in? I'm angry because I'm jealous. Yeah, but yeah. but is, is is that something you're interested? Yeah, in? like I I I, I tried to put out feelers a few years ago. It's like I just want to go back over there. And there's there's programs for um like dudes who have been wounded. There's there's like programs where they'll take you back to the place mm. that you got wounded and stuff oh, like dope. that. I would fucking love to do that. I don't know if you can go I back just, to Solder City. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, especially right now. That might motherfucker's be a little still alive. He's and he's, he's pulled, in he's, Parliament. He's, yeah, he's still in power. No, he's what in Parliament. Not not in power in Solder City. God he's in the Iraqi. Well, Parliament. we wanted to dude. give them democracy. God. He got elected. And he almost, yeah. like, he got really close. Their party got really close to winning the prime ministership as well, which he's the leader of the party, so he would have been the prime minister. It's fucked up. It's weird to see, yeah. isn't it? Like, we and, had now, a, and now we're just on this side, and we have to just see yeah. this shit. And you're just like. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. Fuck yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Thanks, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had an Iraqi <laughs> commander on who uh, was telling us about uh, the, the whole Sadr City leadership and all that other shit. Like, he said that he was mentally retarded. Uh, Look, Tad Al-Sadr, yeah. He was, he's, yes. like, he's almost like... Uh, like, for real. Not like a, in a joke Like, way. he couldn't speak for a while, and... like He sounded like a fucking pussy when we were there. That was goddamn 12 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was... Uh, I mean, he, he hid the whole time we were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he went to Najaf or some shit and hid yeah. out the whole time we were there. Um, he's, he's a... Well, they, they painted all those signs everywhere, yeah. and I drew orange dicks on all of them. <laughs> Yeah. Like 400 he's got buildings. pictures yeah. Yeah. he's got That's pictures well, he's seen him yeah. in person he's seen him in person because I did it all over the goddamn city mm-hmm. um, <laughs> that guy's a turd and he, but you know so are all of our leaders so what are you going to do so were all you guys <laughs> together did you guys all know each other overseas who's all of us uh, Jack Derek no no Jack was in the Marine Corps gotcha yeah. and we don't associate with them no, 14 yeah. years and 60 pounds ago, man. <laughs> how, long, how long were you? So I get, so like, I, how long were you in the Marines? Just four years. Okay. Yeah, it was a very, very short time. And what, yeah. you're, you were 03 what? Uh, 02 to 06. No, no, no. You're MOS. Oh, I was a, it's a bastard infantry MOS. I was a 03 13. What does that mean? LAV crewman. It's like uh, strikers in the army. Oh, yeah, word. Yeah, we yeah. have those. Yeah. Yeah. They ride around and people shoot <laughs> didn't them. Didn't respect they do them at all. No. <laughs> uh, you guys are different. They, I, I don't know. Strikers do what they do, I guess. Yeah. I don't really know. What, I, like, I've been in them. We were riding around on some second IDs guys. You've been uh, in a striker? Yeah. I've never been in a striker. Yeah, we did uh, some raids with them. They were doing some of our blocking positions. And oh, we, he got to do that because I got shot. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I miss a lot of that deployment. It's privilege. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, it's privilege. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we would ride around in those in the strikers, and like you would hear small arms fire hitting the vehicle and uh i don't remember who it was but somebody was like there was a lieutenant that was the commander of the truck and he was like uh hey are we gonna stop and do something about this he said, no it's just just ak's <laughs> like, just so, getting shot like, just like that to me okay. yeah. that, that to me is like uh, a huge misunderstanding of what war is you can't just it's like it's not like prison rules necessarily but you can't walk around or drive around and let people just take shots at you without responding to it yeah because you're gonna escalate yeah 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 they're like children over there. You remember when we like when we first got to when we first set up Callahan? There it was like in the first few days. It was the third day, yeah. Yeah, and it was like so like um I I don't know where you were at because we were in we were on the, comp- we were on the third floor. We, but like we, you we were, were at, we were at different companies at that point. Yeah, so you like, were like uh, when you come up the stairs all the way to one side of the building. You mm-hmm. all, all of Charlie yeah. was over there, and we were like closest to the stairs. Yeah. So I guess maybe um, Dan and I were in the army together. Uh-huh. Like that's how we, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we were in uh two, three, two, five yep. and dude, like we just got back from a tr- patrol that day mm. and I was like, I maybe racked out for like 45 minutes and all of a sudden this was like, go, 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 go. Yeah. You just hear fucking machine guns opening up in yep. the cop. And that was the first for me. And that was, that was kind of funny. It was, it was like, like some, somebody, uh, took some sniper shots at our, at the top of our <laughs> building. And as soon as the force pro people called it in. We were all so hyped up and ready to fuck shit up. Every, everybody everybody grabbed shooting. their weapon. Most people didn't even put any gear on. They just grabbed their weapon and went to a window <laughs> and started fucking shit up, throwing grenades, shooting rockets. I got up there. I was like, where are we shooting at? They're like, nothing. I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we lit that city yeah. on fucking fire. And, uh, yeah. So no, we shot, like, AT4s at the house across yeah, the way there. Yeah. <laughs> there was only, I think, uh, the only, there were sniper rounds and then some rocket attacks, but the only, like, small arms attack after that 
Actually, I don't think there was a small arms attack after that. The only yeah. it was that Cody Grader could get killed with an RPG, but yeah. and a guard tower. But I don't think anybody took pot shots at us anymore after yeah. that. No, nope. but nope. that's Funny that's stuff. what I'm saying. Like you yeah. can't fucking you know how it is. Yeah. You can't just fucking uh, cruise around and let people fuck with you like that. You got to stomp people's asses on a regular basis because not only is that just human psychology, but especially their their culture. Yeah, so I guess the point of the thing is like somebody like shot three rounds at mm-hmm. our building, and we shot like thirty thousand back at them. It was something crazy. <laughs> like we, it's necessary. We had it's six. Necessary. I, I mean, it was. It had to be a lot of rounds because we had six hundred shooters in that building. I would say probably eighty <laughs> percent of them were involved in that, and we went we went uh, conditionally black on ammo. Like we had to refit that. Yeah. Day. So, I thought I broke my toe on that shit. I was running upstairs, and I thought I, like, stubbed my toe. I was like, fuck, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought I broke my toe on that shit. Anyways, um, stupid story. Did but, you know yeah. Jared over there as well? Yeah, so Jared, um, that's how That's how I um, That's how I know all this shit. Mm. That's Jared. Yeah, Jared was our JTAC. Mm. Jared was the JTAC attached to our army unit there. Yep. It's and weird, then, man. Uh, Jared's always a connection for all of us. Yeah, he, I feel like I've yep. never seen anybody like it, it, almost by accident, though. But it's always him that he. Jared. We, we went on one of those. <laughs> yeah. We went on one of those AFE tours together, and of course, Jared of all people ends up sitting next to the ambassador to Romania, and <laughs> becomes <laughs> really? best friends with him because it's always Jared that's in those situations. <laughs> yeah. It's so strange, man. I mean, he just rolls around, and it's like, hey, like he, he, he knows was, everybody. He was on the sh- he was on a drinking broets earlier, and he's wearing a suit jacket, uh, drinking doubles at ten thirty in the morning. And I was like, what do you got on the rest a of Monday? The day? It's oh. not just ten thirty. Yes. today's Monday. Yes, whatever on Monday, wh- whatever day the show comes out, today's Monday. And I showed up here, and Jared was yeah, it's Jared. Jared. Jared was Jared. Yep. What and you a see is what you get. He, he wasn't just wearing a suit jacket. He had a fucking nice shirt underneath. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, but, what yeah. the fuck are you doing, yeah. bro? Yeah. Well, he's a beautiful guy. That's Jared, though. Yeah. Uh, that's how did you meet him, Jack? Uh, when we started doing the Range Fifteen stuff, at yeah, really, yeah, no shit. We we had him, Matt, and Vincent over probably about a year before we started filming. Okay. That's right around the same time I met you, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, that's funny, man. Everybody always asks us to do a goddamn sequel for that. All the time. Everybody. I was actually thinking about that earlier. That'd be a great, uh, uh, like, uh, April Fool's joke. Is we're gonna we're finally doing the sequel to that. Well, like, you know, the script has been done, right? Oh yeah, I read it for fucking two years, three years. I, can I say the one scene that I still remember from reading the the? Yeah, you can do it every sequel now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not gonna make it. But you had you wanted to get the guy from the Sandlot, the redheaded fat kid from the Sandlot. <laughs> yes. And it was a makeout scene with Vincent, where, or he was his dad, it, and he would kiss him on the lips. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. that so was him hilarious. and the zombie had a baby, and it was the red-haired fat kid from Sandlot. <laughs> and they were just, and he was just so pissed off that his mom was a zombie. Yeah. And he was just like, Dad, fuck you, but dude. But Vincent like, would make him kiss him nope, on the lips. kiss me on the lips before we leave. <laughs> Let's have a little kiss on the lips yeah. before we leave. Uh, and it was great, but those those everybody's so busy. All the companies blew up, and it was just yeah. like you know trying to get everybody's schedules together for all that shit is is tough. I'm still man. free. I, I was free. During I get the first. I uh, get asked about it <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, but but all the time that that pops up. All the time, up. and all I say is uh, I don't know, man. I know it's not up to me. I know because yeah. your character was legendary in that. I, I mean, it was written that way. Like it was one of the only original things to. Whereas one of the only things to survive the original script was that character. You had a doll glued to your cock yeah. the entire movie. So, but a lot, what a lot of people don't realize is like you'd eat lunch like that. Yeah. So twelve hours a day, you had <laughs> oh, yeah. a, you had a blow up doll. Yeah, because well, we had to, the first few days we had to have her, have her zip lined on there. Or, yeah, uh, fishing line glued yeah. to your cock. Yeah, for the entire time, and yeah. it was amazing. Just walking around like that. And now you're growing your hair out. You look great. I, know, I look like a piece of shit. <laughs> you look great. So I'm you actually know, I'm going like, to be doing a comb over. Is why I'm growing it out. So. Yeah. For Bet TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you shooting with those guys? Uh, we did a show called The Shop, and so we're going to be doing nine episodes. One of my of, favorites, man. It was a good one. Greg Kelly wrote. Reminds that. me of The Office, like a military yeah. version of The Office. That, what I really loved about that is, uh, like anybody else, I have preferences and content. I'm not into the macho chest beating ura shit right you can't come on my page <laughs> no, <laughs> well, like, as far as like military stuff goes i've been out of the military yeah. so long like I, I don't need explosions i want substance and i what i loved about that show is it was all dialogue it was it, it, there was no shinies there was no explosions there was no gratuitous sex it was all in the writing it was a really w- well written show so yeah yeah it was one of my favorites i mean a, a lot of the Things that Donnie is doing over there at Vet TV, man, 
is really ingenious and like that motherfucker walks the talk like he's yeah. actually making shows for veterans by veterans and yeah, like very diverse shows and they too. Keep, it, it, what i've noticed is it keeps getting bigger dan i know you were a huge fan of the movie yeah it was good uh just the recut i mean you can tell from the beginning of this conversation and the entire history of drink it bros in general that uh if you're not a military member we have a certain way about us <laughs> it's like uh People people get so wrapped up in these little. I mean, I guess what what's now called is microaggressions, and uh, you know it happens in, in society and culture when you become more economically stable that you start to turn inward and think about yourself, and then society at large and people start making these leaps of of it's just nonsense, right? Everybody gets so fucking sensitive all of a sudden because they're thinking about their feelings all the time. Well, for us, our feelings are like they they get spiked not by microaggressions but by watching our friends get their fucking legs shot off or their brains blown out of their fucking head or burned alive, you know what I mean? So when we get back here, one of the coping, coping mechanisms for, for trauma is obviously comedy, and we talk about that stuff very openly because we're used to talking about it with each other. Like, whatever it is, race, religion, fucking death, it doesn't matter because I'm not offended by that. I'm offended by people disrespecting or wasting the sacrifice of people that I loved. Yeah. That's what I'm offended by. I'm offended by poverty, shit like that. Yeah. I'm not offended by a, a crass joke yeah. because yeah. as long as I know the intent was to make people laugh, even if it's like a super fucked up joke, yeah. sexist or racist or whatever it is, it's still going to be funny to me if it's funny, right? Because that shit, words like that, they don't matter. That's not what matters in life. This shit matters. So. That's where, dude. That's where it's uh, um, it's 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 tough to be a veteran in comedy on the internet sometimes because exactly that is like like so like the like you know he said he gets offended by poverty like that's what like actual real true suffering like offends yeah. me but like I, I I make like shit jokes mm -hmm. I make jokes that fucking sort of attack people who shouldn't get mad at certain things like mm -hmm. that was that was a very big statement man yeah. holy shit you know and that's where we go wrong sometimes but so like but vet TV. They are at, they have, they like, they do not give a shit. There is like, on, oh, yeah, on the humor no. scale, yeah. they're a 10 out of 10. And the cast is like, we fucking go for it. And if somebody wants to get upset, but like, even yeah, sometimes, okay. like, some of the humor is like, will challenge a veteran's sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that needs to happen. And like, that's a beautiful thing. Because it's like, because sometimes veterans are fucking sensitive. Oh, those bitches. They're like, they're <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah can it, I say pussies? Yeah. Like, pussies. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like, the veterans the are no different than the rest of society. So there's an element of veterans who, like the rest of society, are completely complete pussies about humor and humor yeah. has to be humor no matter what so it's like sometimes those jokes are like um you know like uh whatever the jokes are like humor is humor yeah and even even when the shoe fits sh funny's funny even when the shoe fits i can I think know, of like, at least yeah. 22 reasons why they need to calm the fuck down you know <laughs> <laughs> any, any any reason why the number 22 <laughs> yeah. came to mind you a taylor swift uh, fan i don't know nah, you're, you're three years behind the curve there it's it's twenty. Oh, so that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You know, t you know. The thing is, too, like twenty veterans a day commit suicide, but it's never the ones I want. So unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. oh, Jesus Christ! Uh, all that hate mail should go to Jack Mandeville. Yeah, it's never Jack Mandeville on Instagram. <laughs> it's never that turd that always got DUIs on the weekend or showed up late no. to formation and, and who's fucked now everybody who's over. now a total piece of shit and wasting everyone's no, oxygen. That, that, that guy's back in his hometown, no. fucking telling everybody that yeah. he's a war hero now. It because. Uh, to get to the point where you're going to commit suicide, yeah. it, it takes a certain amount of self-awareness. You have to be hyper aware of yeah. the world around you. So it, I would imagine people who do this are n naturally intelligent or somewhat intelligent people. Well, there's, yeah, I mean, just irrespective of veteran issues and PTSD, suicide is more common among people with higher IQs. That's, right. That's just a, They're overthinkers. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And that, that probably leads to depression and other Yeah, I mean, look, the ignorance is bliss, yeah. right? Everyone's heard that phrase, and it's true. Yeah. It is absolutely true. It is, it is difficult to reconcile our position in this world because, look, at the end of the day, if you're religious, then maybe you feel like you have a purpose, but the vast majority of people in our generation don't give a shit about that stuff anymore. So it's like if there's no uh, external fucking force at work, how do you validate your existence? And that people have a problem with that. And it's on a micro scale, I guess, if you want to call it that, when people serve in the military and they feel like they finally have purpose in their life. And I, I mean, almost everybody I know that served in the military was without drive in any sort of way until they joined the military and they found a sense of purpose. And wh whether it's patriotism or whether more commonly, whether it's they develop these you know brotherhoods 
that they would fucking do everything for, risk their lives for on a regular basis. Um, and then you get out and it's not like that anymore. Like, yeah, in, in theory, I would still risk my life for any one of you guys. But what, where's the application of that? Because that shit doesn't happen in our lives anymore. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So trying to find purpose like that is, is difficult for people. And, and some people can tune it out. Right. Uh, the rest of us are drinking. And it's not great. Drinking's a depressant. <laughs> so when you add, that's like just gasoline on a fire for people. And if you're a smart guy, it, it, like I, I, I know a lot of people just try to dumb themselves down, I think, on purpose. Uh, and it's for that reason. You're, you're completely right. Like the smarter you are, the more aware you are of what the fuck's going on. And that can be difficult to deal with sometimes. It's probably an easier path to depression, I would imagine. Oh, for sure, yeah. My mistake, dude. So, like, you know, um, I guess if we're going to talk about this yeah. heavy, heavy hitter shit, you yeah. know, like um, I look back on my fucking early years getting kicked out of the army. Like, I didn't I didn't I didn't get out of the military the way I wanted to. Like, I already like you knew me in the army. Mm-hmm. Like, I, some, sometimes I just kind of want to ask Dan, like, what his opinion of me when we were in was because I was a fucking you, gung-ho You were very driven, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, yep. I was super about it, you mm-hmm. know, and I would already re-enlisted and stuff like that. And I think that maybe sometimes I was kind of like a cunt. In the army, but I, but I, I'm sure. Like, I mean, that's how yeah. it happens. So everybody's not on the same wavelength, and you, ha- like, you're never going to be until the gunfight starts. And everybody's yeah. on the same wavelength, but yeah. that that time in between <laughs> yeah. is like it's still conflicting personality. It's all yeah, your individuality, which yeah. is a good thing, and it, it is an absolutely a good thing because that's what to me. If you're one of those smarter people, that's the lesson you learn from that whole shit. Evan mm-hmm. says it on one of the it's who we are's uh, uh, about uh. Wally Tazlim, the fucking Afghan commander that came over and works at Black Rifle now, he's like the first one of the first things you learn in combat is that prejudice will get you killed. Yeah, like, I have to depend on these people no matter what they're back. They're fucking gay. I don't give a shit. Yeah, like if you're shooting in the same direction as me, you are my family. Yeah, essentially. Um, but yeah, you were super driven. I would say you were a cunt about it or anything like that. But yeah. you know, everybody's got their different motivations. And then when you know, but. To speak to that, before you were in the military, and I think we've talked about it on the show before, you were lost. Yeah. In general. Yeah. And then it's interesting to see that you found your purpose and then it was essentially taken away from you and you immediately became lost again. Yeah. Like I knew you through this whole period yeah. when you were living in Minnesota and then a little bit in Denver too, but mostly in Minnesota it was a shit show. Bar yeah. fights, stupid bullshit, yeah. mm-hmm. sitting in your house for eight so hours actually, a day like, playing video I, games and all that dumb shit. Yep. And so, um, actually, so like there's a picture of me, you and Billy, um, you know, when I was, remember when I went to college there and I did like a fundraiser for the yeah. warrior project yep. back in the day and you came, yep. I hosted a fucking fundraiser at my apartment in the party room. Um, cause really? there was, a, there was a school project where you had to like give a speech and raise money for an organization mm-hmm. and fucking Dan mm-hmm. came to like, yeah, the, like me and Dan go back a long mm-hmm. time and he knows a lot about me and stuff. Yeah. It's like fucking... Yeah, yeah it's, it's weird. Like the 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 person that you used to describe of who you are is a hundred percent opposite yeah. today. Dan, Dan was there. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, Dan it knows is, me. Dan I don't, knows I don't, me. I don't yeah. think fundamentally it's different, though. I mean, it's the circumstances are different, and the circumstances are different because you created different circumstances for yourself, right? So, I mean, if you were uh, external stuff, can't intrinsically bring you happiness necessarily. Right. You you, uh, yeah. you have to be mentally healthy mm-hmm. for that to happen, but. Uh, you can't be the most mentally healthy person in the most fucked up situation is going to be more fucked up probably than the you know a middle middle of the road mentally healthy person in a perfect situation because yeah. those inner demons still get you no matter how like fucking yeah. what's what's her name the fucking lady that made purses and shit that killed her Kate Spade Kate Spade yes. yeah she she's but could pro- probably not have had a better life she's dead and Anthony Bourdain, Bourdain in the same week I think yeah. Right? Yeah. hey he's got like, a, we got a candle with Bourdain right here on the table <laughs> <laughs> we got a Bourdain candle yeah. right here. That's, that's Jesse's awesome. end all be all <laughs> So you know? that, that, yeah, but that's the important part of it, though. Like you, you had help, obviously, mm-hmm. like supportive friends and and family and all that bullshit. But it's like you have to. It's a good example of how you have to take charge of your own fucking. It life. doesn't matter. So okay, so like getting back to like you know, so I look back on my fucking like since we were talking about veteran suicide mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Looking back on those first two three years, I was living like shit. I was living. I was living horribly. And like people to this day, like dude, like last week, some girl fucking wrote me a message and she said, "Hey, my good friend is going through this." You know, he's he's like drinking a lot. And he wants to kill yeah. himself and things like that. How do I help this person? How do I fucking like he's talking about killing himself? Mm-hmm. How do I help this person? And I just message him. I'm like, you can't. 
Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. You can't. You can like, be until available. A month, until a person it. wants to help themselves, because like, yeah, back in the day I was living like shit, and, and I had every support system mm. fucking available to me, and nothing worked until I wanted to help myself, yeah, yeah. and it was just kind of a... Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm getting nostalgic. No, I mean all like, you can. No, no, not, <laughs> yeah. All not, you can really all do. These shows, like, yeah, Dan was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah. Uh, we look. We've done mm-hmm. f- close to 600 shows at this point. Mm-hmm. Some are funny. Some are serious, and it yeah. doesn't matter. Like, yeah. That, yeah. that's what the show is. At the, yeah. end, at the end of the day, to what you're saying, um, all you can do for people like that is be available. Yeah, that's like, it. honestly, all you can do is be available. Some people, uh, the unfortunate truth is, you can't save everybody. No, you can't. You can't save anybody, that, man. But like, but this is. She's like, what do I? What do I do for him? I was like, you can't do anything. Like, just tell him that you're there. Yeah. When, and that's and it. if and if he wants to reach out or if he wants to fucking mm-hmm. not, that's up to him. But like, nothing, nothing, nothing can help somebody until somebody wants to help themselves. And mm-hmm. so, like, that's all this. Like when we were talking about all that, like, like all the. Uh, you know, 2016, the veteran suicide thing became super popular on the internet, and it I was an industry. I, yeah, it, yeah, it really yeah. did, and that's yeah. what bothered me is because, like, you know, so like, on uh, you know, and I put out a video where I was like anti the movement. I remember that, and yeah. but I was also there, <laughs> like myself personally, like I just wanted to fucking die for like two yeah. years because I got kicked out of the army for. Uh, like I, I didn't want to leave the army. I had yeah. reenlisted. Like I yeah. was a gung ho motherfucker. Like that was my life plan, you know. And so I wanted to fucking die because I thought that my life was over be- and things like that. But um, yeah, it was it was fucking weird there for a while, and now all that shit's fizzled off. Which is I don't know. It's a fucking <laughs> life is weird, man. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. I, the interesting thing about you, Jack, is like you had told me a long time ago when I met you, you were like, "Hey, man, being a veteran doesn't define me." I do different things in this life and I have different beliefs and all that other shit. Why was that? Uh, I I work in this space where ironically, like I am around a lot of military veterans or military people. A lot of my humor is uh, very easily digestible for military veterans and military people. Um, It's because I've, Working with uh, a lot of veterans who are creative, I'm not, I don't work, when we did Rage 15, I would say like, I like working with these guys, not because they're veterans, cause, but because they're creative people who happen to be veterans. Right. So not only am I getting to work with fellow creative people, but obviously we like understand certain jokes and everything. Um, when I got out of the, I got out in 2006, a long time ago, I worked in the oil, I went to college, I worked in the oil industry, I held numerous jobs. It wasn't until around like 2013, 14, where I started doing videos and 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 writing certain things that was geared more towards either active duty military or veterans. Kind of reconnecting with the community. Yeah, but yeah. I was, I was never, yeah, but I, that was like new to me to kind of go down that road and like, I'm very proud to be a veteran, uh, but I feel like. The, the acting things and the movies, you know, that we got to do together yeah. and so many other things are a lot just as equally defining as serving in the Marine Corps. Sure. Marine Corps was special to me only because that was that perfect time of life, 18 to 22 years old, where I met really, really, really close lifelong friends. Outside of that, everything else was fucking overrated. The deployments, everything. like <laughs> It was all fucking stupid, and, and we're beginning to find out for nothing. But like the friends I made during that period are the greatest things I walked away from. And to this day, I'm very close with a lot of the dudes I served with. Because you're all going through the same experience at the same time, yeah. at the same age. And it's like anybody that yeah. age. Your college friends, you same guys fucking college, getting yeah. into trouble and shit. Like you're gonna, This is stuff you're always going to remember when you're... 40 50 years old and you guys get back with each other you know yeah yeah i it, it's interesting you say that because it, it, it is like i remember reading an article about why people stay close to college why they live around college yeah and it's because it was the best time of their lives and then yeah. they're you know hey, they're i want to live around social there. years i know because yeah. that's where you kind of learn everything of yeah. like hey Mom and dad aren't there, military or yeah. otherwise. Mom and dad aren't there. I got to do You're this on my own. Choosing your friends. Yes. Yeah. And then who's there for me? Yeah. 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 Are you close with most of the guys you serve with? Yeah. Well, like dudes um, that 
uh, in my immediate platoon, I still like I'm going to go do a marathon with uh, four of them in October. What are you going to walk it? Yeah, what are you, you, what are you oh yeah, I'm not. Oh, I'm not yeah, doing. Like, uh, I'm not. Well, I'm not running at Jack's Kenyan going speeds. down fucking tidy whiteies. <laughs> yeah, no. With marine boots on. I actually, I What's came in dead last at a 5K yeah. one time I on purpose. That. It's actually yeah. hard to do. It's <laughs> really? Come, come in dead last at a 5K is one of the hardest. So bored. It's harder than coming in first place. What was that like? 37, 38 minutes or more in the 40s. No, 5K. almost two hours. Jesus. Your time is because, two hours? Because there's those asshole parents miles. that make their kid, they want their little five-year-old to do it on their own, mm-hmm. so they'll have a five-year-old walk it, and they'll be with their kids, so I had to like walk behind the five-year-old. And it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. And I told everyone before this fight, it was the, the Washington Redskins draft day 5k and i told everyone i'm coming in dead last today and no one believed me i came in fucking dead last that's hilarious yeah. why don't you just run around the kids your commitment to uh being yeah. a piece of shit is that's inspiring. jack that's, it's my job that's jack yeah. that that just it's makes sense like i'm gonna make i'm gonna come in last place i went for making si- i went for i went from making six figures in the oil field to <laughs> hey now i'm making the average bucks to be a piece of shit on the <laughs> internet and I, every once in a while i get an acting gig yeah. yeah. What was that like in the oil fields? Great money. It was yeah. a shitty life. Oh, it wasn't terrible. I had my own truck and I it actually wasn't that hard. <laughs> I got, had my own truck. I had my yeah. own truck. I wasn't that like, shitty. I had my own what, truck. What does that mean? I no, don't, it's I don't like, know what a job is. I did is, I did so. one of my jobs is I did flow back. So I I they gave me my own truck and it was a take home truck and I'd go out there and I would go sit in a trailer all day and watch the Playboy channel, and once an hour I had to go check a gauge, maybe take a sample, and then I'd go back in and jerk off for 12 hours and get paid a shitload of money. Really? Yeah, it was really easy. I mean, it's easy. What does that pay? Because everybody says the oil field pays like fucking six figures. like Depending where you're at and the time period. But yeah, I was making I'm a little... A little over 100K uh, at, at one point. 100K. Fuck, dude. Yeah. We make it on the internet now. <laughs> Not that much on the internet. <laughs> Fuck no. Yeah, this is a labor of love at this point. Yeah. But isn't that shit dangerous? Uh, you know what's funny? I left the oil field, and I went and worked for Ranger Up. The, the week after I left, the guy who replaced me got blown up in a battery explosion. No fucking yeah. way. Yeah. That could have been you. Could have been me. He was driving past uh, one of the batteries when they exploded. Yeah. Oh, God. Mm. Is his family sending you hate mail? Of like, hey, dude, thanks for quitting. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's the oil field. So many people are in and out of it. Yeah. How many people are working on one of those things at a time? I never worked on a rig or anything. I did completions. Yeah, I did like a, I was I was considered a roustabout. Okay. Yeah. How many people are working with you? Like in that? Our, our little company that we contracted with, uh, there was probably three hundred people in the company. Shit. Yeah. Shit. So you leave, and then the guy after you dies. Yeah. Well, Classic no, he didn't die. Yeah, he was badly injured, but he, he was Jack. blown up. That's yeah. kind of like the uh, reverse of Wally Pip and Lou Gehrig. <laughs> Yeah, what? <laughs> Wally Pip is the guy who got injured, and Lou Gehrig took over for him, and then he played like twenty four hundred consecutive games or yeah. whatever the fuck. Wally Pip, you don't want to be Wally Pip unless it involves <laughs> staying alive. <laughs> be a Lou, be a Lou, be, be a Lou. Lou. I tell I tell young dudes getting out of the military, like if you're single, if you have no obligations to anywhere, and you don't want to, you know, go to college right away or anything, like if you just want to make money, go work on the fucking oil field, man. You make a shit. Like of money. so, so yeah. me, like so, I, you know. Um, I, I help people with their fitness and stuff like that. My fucking, I have two, I have two kinds of people that I have trouble helping truck drivers and people in the fucking oil industry. Cause they're just like, I can't get away from my job for a long time and things like that. And when they you know, do, like they all blow it on yeah, Coke and new yeah, trucks just and women. Like, you know, I just spent too much money on chicken fingers at Texas roadhouse and yeah, like I don't know. Like, yeah. yeah, but money's money, but time is time. Yeah. Is, Did you like, save any of it? I was only in it for a couple years, uh, so I had a little bit of a savings, but yeah, I blew through it. No much. amount of money ever bought a second of time. It's <laughs> one of my sure. favorite quotes. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, uh, you know what's funny about, um, so I, uh, oh, yeah, shit, fuck, dude. Like, they gave me 50K when I got kicked out of the Army, and they sent me back to Minnesota there. Good luck, bud. I fucking piss it all away in six months on booze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not one cent of it yeah. left. Not a fucking penny. Yeah. They they try to give me a good. Fucking Is that what there was like a consolation prize? Like, hey, thanks for everything. Thanks for your leg. Here's fifty yeah, k. It was like the TSGLI. Like, hey, 
good job fucking surviving that seven months and yeah. being patient in the hospital. Here's 50K. But then they've just fucking like kicked me out. I, I try to stay in, you know? Yeah. I, I try to stay in. And they yeah. were like, fuck you. We're kicking whole, you out. The yeah. whole time, like that whole period from, I guess, middle 2007 when it, you got shot until, what was it, 2010 when you got your leg cut off? 2000, December 2011. 11. So 10 yeah. is when I saw you in Colorado and you were getting ready to, like it was at the end, I think. So you were actually getting, so... It took you four years of yeah. begging these people to cut your fucking leg yeah. off <laughs> it like before they would do it. So I don't know. I don't know anybody that's been more jerked around by both the military and the VA than you, right? Uh, yeah, dude, it was brutal. It's oh. <laughs> yeah. They gave me forty percent disability when they kicked me out. <laughs> oh. With you one know, leg? Well, 40, like, so, did they so, do it on body? Like what, you lost? Like, you what, lost forty percent of your get, body? You get like twenty percent for each limb or some shit. Like yeah, that? yeah. it's like dude, it's just like do long story short. Like so, it's dude, like um, yeah, they fuck. Uh, like I took a, I put took a bullet side to side through the knee there, and um, you know they, I was in inpatient at Walter Reed for seven months yeah. and they sent me back to Minnesota and then I became a part of this wounded transition brigade fucking bullshit and I was like hey just cut my leg off I want to go back to my job mm. cut my leg off my my friends are still overseas I want to like just get me back over You're there the old uh, men of honor men of honor go right well, there like, well like yeah. I guess but it was natural it wasn't fucking pompous or something mm. like that you know like I wanted to get back overseas and um you know so they were like hey if if you try this surgery then we'll talk about cutting your leg off. And so yeah. I tried that surgery and yeah, it still yeah. failed. And then they're like, okay, if you try this surgery and it fails, we'll talk about cutting your leg off. And right. so I tried that surgery. And so that, that surgery failed again. And then instead of talking about cutting my leg off, they just said, we're going to start the medical board process. Yeah. I'm like, you motherfuckers. Yeah. You motherfuckers. And then, they, and then they fucking med boarded me at 40%. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, dog, here's six hundred and fucking seventy dollars sure a month. Love America, six hundred and seventy dollars yeah. a month, and they kicked me out of the army. No it's I'm just, I'm just it's, like sitting there in my fucking studio apartment in two thousand nine with mm. six hundred and seventy bucks a yeah. month income and nothing, and I just wanted to fucking go back to the army. And so like, so wouldn't like you know like the the like you know like so yeah, I wanted to fucking I wanted to fucking die back then. Mm. I didn't fucking hated that shit. I hated that shit. So. You ever have you ever talk to uh amputees from previous generations like vietnam maybe Korea, my, my prosthetist here is a is a vietnam uh era he got it he, he my prosthetist is in a right leg above oh, right. fucking guy yeah it's like yeah so we have it but but so at the time i wasn't i didn't get kicked out as an amputee do you know that like sure, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was living i was limb salvage for fucking four years yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's God fucking, damn yeah, weird shit, man. Back, yeah. That's mm. fucking crazy, man. It's, what The craziest part to me is that it took until 2008 for any of this shit to really come to light. It was the people dying in Phoenix, VA, right? Like, waiting in line, dying. Like, I think a dude died inside the VA or some shit. Like, not in a, not in the hospital. Well, in, like, a waiting room or some shit. Yeah. Which is, uh, couldn't be a more fitting metaphor for that entire system. And uh, we, we know, like, the, the thing I always get back to is, and... John F. Kennedy said, you know what, we're going to go to the fucking moon. And everybody's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And it took, what, less than a decade? Yeah, it was like eight years or something like that. The will to make shit happen, like we have all the money we need. The the idea that we can't afford to do something, it's fucking bullshit. That is nonsense. That that will always be nonsense. So what does it, I mean, what does it say about this country? And look, we're all fucking patriots here, but what does it say about this country that for a decade... Everyone in this country was willing to just accept the fact that veterans could get fucked. And it wasn't just a decade, if you think about it. It was four, because the Vietnam era guys got hammered, right? So what does it say about this country that uh, that, that was the case? And, and I hate to quote Rambo, <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, do you? <laughs> but when he was asked, what do you want? He said, I want what every other veteran wants for my country to love me as much as I love it. And it never happened. You know, like, uh, can I just, can I just like fucking vent for a second? So dude, like, so in the VA as an, so like I finally got my leg cut off in 2011 and it was the, it was actually like, so I, I met with this doctor in 2009 before I got kicked out of the army yep. and I, and I did like a medical board ethics process about getting my leg cut off. Cause it was an ethics argument back then. And they denied me and they kicked me out of the army. And then two years later I met with the same doctor and he agreed to cut my leg off. And I was like, 
<sighs> Thank you. But you fucking could have saved me like several, like, because yeah. I got several DUIs and felony assault and I was in every psych ward anyways. But, um, you know, dude, like I had great, like the VA in Minnesota at Minneapolis, Minnesota, the prosthetics department mm. was the fucking shit, dude. They were amazing. They would give me like, they would just be like, Hey, what do you want to do? And I'd, and I'd tell them, I'm like, all right, we need to order this and this and this and this and this. And they get me squared away. And in Denver, it was the same goddamn mm. thing, but I live in Las Vegas now and it's Oh my God, it's awful. So it, it, it's been an awful experience like you went, here. I, like, it was sometime last year. You went eight months without a leg, right? Oh, like dude, that? like I can't, yeah, didn't like, fit or something. I, mm-hmm. I saw you online talking about it all the time. And you're so like, I'll, I'll just I'll tell you the story straight up. So I moved here. Uh, I, I moved here. This is this is my story, and I'm a fucking like I'm not boast. It is what it is. I'm a, in a like a world class elite level athlete mm-hmm. in the amputee world. You know, mm-hmm. and I just want yeah. I just want good care. And I come to the VA here, and it took me eight months to get in to see the prosthetist. And yeah, there can't so, be that Christ. many amputees. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. But I'll tell you like the full story. So I finally get into the fucking amputee clinic, and then there and then there's this guy. That, like, I'm just gonna vent, man. Can I vent? Like, yes, this is what so the show is. I, I get it, while you're I, at I, it, I get into this clinic, and there's this fucking there's this guy. His name's Dan Ramsey, and he's an above knee amputee too. And he and like and he's the prosthetist mm-hmm. at this clinic. He's a Vietnam era guy, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I finally get in there, and he says he t- he looks at me, and he tells me. He's He's like, hey, I'm on my way out and I can't see you. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I fu- he gives me like so they're not taking patients anymore because mm. he's the only prosthetist there. So he he gives me a fucking printout of this four pages of clinics in town. Mm. So now for the first time in my life, I have to go outside the VA to get care. And I and I and I never do this, but I posted a fucking rant. I was angry and I posted it on Facebook mm. and somebody hooked me up with this guy named Adam Stryker because he's from Minnesota mm. and it was a mutual friend type thing. So I start going to his clinic and I start going to his clinic and he's able to get me care. Mm. Well, I walk into his clinic one day and guess who's there? The new prosthetist is Dan Ramsey from the VA. And then all of a sudden, the woman that takes over the prosthetics clinic here at the VA has a non-compete against Dan Ramsey, my friend. And so that's why I went all last year without any care, because there was a fucking bullshit ass non-compete against my fucking prosthetist. It was it was the dumbest shit, man. It was the dumbest shit, and and um, what was the end result to that? So October fifteenth, I was able like the non compete was up, and but here's how fucking sh- dude like the VA here like and I'm not a VA hater, man, but um, they hired a guy who wasn't a licensed prosthetist. He wasn't a licensed prosthet- prosthetist, and they hired this guy and. Um, this is my care. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. dude, it's wild. He ordered me he ordered me a new leg and new liners and everything. So he ordered me new liners that didn't fit. And he like so here's here's the VA here in Las Vegas. He ordered me a new foot. Mm. He ordered me a left foot. <laughs> no <laughs> fucking way. Maybe dude, he's I'm, just I'm a just, really I like I'm, I'm so mad about it. He's I'm probably just so... a really big Daniel Day Lewis fan. I'm, yeah. <laughs> but, no, but, but, but like they they Sorry for stealing They, it. they fired so. this guy and but the, there's a woman that's in charge of the prosthetics department here and I'm like the middleman like where there's like What's a, her name? Let's call her out fuck, her name's Deborah. Deborah, fuck you, Deborah. Oh, that's so, she sounds like a Deborah. <laughs> yeah. Get fucked, Deborah. How about that? And there's dude like so like all last year I didn't have a leg that fit mm. because i was i was caught because i'm a loyal guy yeah. like this 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 clinic they were super nice to me mm. and all of a sudden they, there was a non-compete involved and things like that and they were just i was i was caught in between two people's pe- two people's personal beef and i was like i'm the only one that's suffering so it's like you know and so actually like stacy got out of um the air force mm. a while back and she was getting into the va system and she's going through these kinds of things mm. and i was like it takes patience. So mm. you want to talk about like why veterans get angry and shit like that, man? Sometimes it's justified. But I've been in yeah. the system long enough. Where I just I'm a patient dude, you know. But last year was fucking bullshit, and I'm and and I make I I, I um, it is what it is. Like I'm me, yeah. and this is the level of care I'm getting. <laughs> you know, it's like eight months. What the fuck? Eight eight like it was like eight and a half months that I had a leg that didn't fit, and it was just because dumb shit. Dumb but, but, shit. But yeah. explain to the audience what that's like, right? For, as an amputee, you have a leg that doesn't fit. How does that affect you on a day to day basis? I didn't basis? just have a leg that didn't fit. I was, I had 
two newborn twin boys where I'm walking down. Like I had to walk and, 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 and I'm sure it was a burden on Stacy too, but it's like, I'm in pain all the time. I'm like in physical pain all the time, walking up and down my hallway to go get boys. And I have a leg that just falls off and doesn't fit. And it's hard to fucking, everything's fucking, everything's fucking hard, man. Everything's already hard as an amputee and they just make it harder. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it's like, <sighs> Patient yeah, man, he's there's certain patient, times like yeah. we've hung out over the last few years, and like you'll have crutches. Mm-hmm. And I, know, I, I, I think I asked you last time. I was like, "Why do you have? Why do you have crutches?" And you were like, <laughs> "Yo, man, this fucking leg, dude, doesn't." Yeah. And, and I was like, "Oh shit, is that what you have to do?" And you're like, "Yeah," and it fucking sucks. Yeah. And so I think because you and I went to either a hockey game or a fight, and watch you watching you just trying to get in and out of an arena, all those steps, <laughs> yeah. all that shit, like. It was fucking brutal, man. And like, um, I don't think anybody realizes the struggle and how hard that is until it's either a friend of yours or a family member or something like that. And you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. And like, maybe that's where I do like a disservice because like I do like fitness and stuff on the Internet as an amputee. And like that shit is is easier for me. Like where the hard part comes in is outside of the gym, you know, like walking around my house, doing the dishes is a fucking shitty chore i don't know chore yeah yeah but it, like i don't complain i don't know it's fucking weird but last no, year you never complained la- last, ever last year sucked man. <laughs> you know, yeah last year was fucking awful i would and, imagine uh, and being a new father to twins is yeah that's just dude, adding like just yeah. extra levels it's fucking like you know like yeah. you're trying to like hold babies and stand up and your legs falling off and you're just your legs falling off because there's fucking shitty people like controlling your life that are just mm. this is like hey yeah <laughs> Yep. It was tough. Yeah, it was but tough. But it's nothing so. new. I mean, look, yeah. uh, I was talking to Alexander about this earlier, but uh, I do, I've do. i been doing research on just the idea of veterans being used as political props over the years. And it's not new. The left and the right are Everybody, equally yeah. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, equally guilty fucking that. guilty of it. And it's nothing that started recently. No, like people, people think that this is a new phenomenon with the Bush era or even the Vietnam era, but it's not even new then it's been going on since the 19th century um since the early 19th century really we're props we i mean we are treated as props yes that's correct and it's it's here's here's the problem veterans are bad advocates for themselves we are terrible at it because suck it up right because the good the good one shut the fuck up and the yeah, shitty do your ones job, right yeah make so, a lot of noise and and that's yeah. the problem so the public representation of the belly aching that is justified from the veteran community usually comes from a bunch of fucking cunts yeah frankly and and only we can say that (laughs) (laughs) Um, so it's like uh veteran veteran with a hard n at the end (laughs) 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 i'm just just gonna let that marinate for a second (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, but that is i mean it's a problem and it's not anything new it really isn't yeah it's from from the way were treated like it was an unpopular right the gi bill was unpopular when it first came out even though we had just like v-day was over the world world war ii and let's be clear the the gi bill created the middle class of this country yeah and it didn't the beauty of the original gi bill is that it didn't burn the taxpayers no yeah no not at all so it's like uh the most sensible piece of legislation maybe that ever came out of this country and it was unpopular then because like well we can't afford that you're saying you can't afford People to just save the world, fuck you, buddy. And you're reinvesting in education, which is yeah. I mean that that part too. Like it's not for me, and this is why Ross and I have been hammering the fucking local government in Wilmington recently. Like education is not a is not a political idea. Education is education. It's an investment in the community. I don't want to live in a country full of dumb people, and it doesn't behoove us to fucking do that. Right. Like if we want to compete, everybody wants to be. And I'm talking about Republicans right now. Let's just be clear. Uh, they want to fucking cut costs and all this bullshit. That's fine. Got it. And they are anti-union. Got it. Whatever the fuck. But education is not something to be fucked with, and neither are we. You can't. You can't fucking. Uh, you can't subjugate the community and society at large to these like this political infighting to the detriment of our country as a whole. And that's what's going on. You know what I mean? Like if we want to, the the idea of American exceptionalism. We're the best country in the world. Okay, cool. What does that mean? Are we the best? Because the best does the best. Michael Jordan wasn't the best because he said it. He was the best because he spent fucking 10 hours a day in a goddamn gym. And our, our 
way of spending 10 hours a day in a gym is giving our people health care to make them healthier, giving them education to make them smarter, developing new industries to keep us ahead of the game. That's how we do it. And these motherfuckers want to argue over it like it's a political idea. No, it's a fucking statement of fact, bitch. <laughs> and I yeah, hate that shit. That's, yeah, that's, and especially but, 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 you in know, education, you're, like, you're, but, you're, but to, to put a cap on this, there should not be Republicans and Democrats in education. That is, political beliefs have nothing to do with education. It's kids. It's kids. And look, you're going K through 12. By the time they graduate, they're barely old enough to vote if they can. Some of them aren't. You know what I'm saying? So why is there a fucking political <laughs> party attached to anybody who's a part of education? It we, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We cut important programs, too. I don't, I don't know what, what the hell they're saving money on, but we've been cutting the arts quite a bit the last uh, yeah. 20, 30 arts years. Arts is always the first to go, by the yeah. way. And, and everything across <laughs> the board. Like, <laughs> like ah, yeah. what's going it's, on now, right? But you know what? It is important for uh, kids to learn how to express themselves. I mean, that, that yeah. doesn't, not everyone's going to go and be a musician or an actor or anything like that. But it's important at, at a young, in, in your formative years, to learn how to express yourself. Yeah. And at least be creative and try yeah. something new. And Sculpting, s- whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Painting. I mean, look at Derek. Fuck, you... Play guitar, I need, I want music, music, yeah, that's I a big paint, cathartic you, thing for you, I mean, isn't Jesus, it? Jesus, there's a million yeah. things artistically that yeah. you do throughout your daily life. That yeah. is, and then yeah, it was, yeah, this is like what 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 could I have been or what would I have done with a better, a different kind of education? <laughs> you know what? I bet <laughs> Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris weren't freaking playing guitar or painting or sculpting or anything like that. <laughs> Columbine reference, kids. Uh, and if you didn't <laughs> yeah. catch it, you do now, Jack. Um. <laughs> yeah. But 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 Dan, your 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 downfall is that you're too smart. Like everything you say is right, and it's just not. It's gonna go over fucking, a lot of heads. Yeah. It's it shouldn't though. These are very simple ideas. Yeah. Like if you I want know, yeah. if you want to be healthy, you eat good food and you exercise. If you yeah. want to be mentally healthy, then you. You learn how to deal with emotions the right way, coping mechanisms yeah. or whatever it is. And if you want to be a healthy country, then you invest in infrastructure, you invest in education, you invest yeah. in health care, and you invest in your benefits. You know, you know what's end. funny is like, so I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna keep um, fucking venting and stuff. Like, you know, like for, um, you know, I didn't get my, I didn't get a hundred percent disability until uh, last year. <laughs> You're yeah. kidding. Yeah, I swear, dude. <laughs> like, what, what do you have to do to prove that? <laughs> yeah, dude. I was like 70% for most of the time. And, uh, you know, but I was one of those fucking prideful son of a bitches. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is a, this is the fair shake that they gave me. But then I saw, like, the, the, the government pay chart and what goes. Like, the so if, if, if the government expenses is a pie, the pay chart to veterans is so fucking small. Mm-hmm. That I was like... Oh shit! We should all fucking get ours. And I was like, I don't care who gets theirs or anything. Everybody mm-hmm. should like, like try their hardest to get yeah. theirs. You know, because like those motherfuckers fucked me for so goddamn long. I got out with forty percent disability. Yeah, it's retarded. I mean, <laughs> we talked. They measure that though. We talked. Oh, they don't care. We man. talked about this before when we were. I don't know if you guys followed this whole thing, but the Richard Stasekall situation, the Green Beret that was trying to, that is now trying to sue the DOD for medical malpractice, and he couldn't because of the Fairies dro- Doctrine. Was, and was he the reason why it changed recently? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. But he came on the show. Dan yeah. was the. I, I'll give Dan the credit. You were one of the biggest advocates for that, and you sat us down. You said, "Hey, man, before we did the shows that week," and you said, "Jared Ross, uh, this is something I want you to talk about. I want to go scorched earth. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. I want this to change, and I think we have the ability to change it." Yeah, I mean, he's he's been dicked around quite a bit, right? But the problem is, again, we're not good advocates for ourselves. No, yeah. So that's what I learned. Just so like, dude, I learned. I, I ran a, a a veterans nonprofit for mm. like three and a half years. The next objective, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah then I, I ran the next objective for like three years, and that's what I learned about the veteran community. Mm. So like, the dudes that need help don't fucking yeah. they don't yeah. ask for help, and then the dudes that ask for help they they're just like kind of like it is what it is. They're the fucking the, the bad apples, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I yeah, but know. I mean, it's like uh, one of the big arguments that we were hearing from Congress, primarily from Democrats, because uh, since I went off on Republicans earlier, let me light these pussies up a little bit. Um, their argument was this is going to open a can of worms and people are just going to be suing the shit out of the government all the time. So fucking what, bitch? Yeah. 
I know, like, so, like, for, so for me, that's, dude, that's like, your so, so for me, like, I finally it was like, so here, here's a funny thing about, uh, here's, here's something I didn't do last year. I finally got, um, I got my hundred percent disability, mm. but I got a hundred percent plus a kicker. Cause like, mm. so like for the first time in my life, like 11 years after what happened to me happened, I got a fucking PTSD evaluation mm. and I was like, Hey, I'm this way, but I think that's normal. Right. And the guy was like, no, that's a disorder. I was like, Oh. I, did, I just thought this is how humans were, you know, like I would mm-hmm. tell him my problems. I was like, Hey, I, I, I do this and this and this. And I'll be like, but I think that's okay. I'm not here to complain. I think I'm, I think I'm doing mm-hmm. okay. He's like, Nope, that's a disorder. So I like, I got, you know, like I'm fucking like almost 300% disabled at this yeah. point, you know, but I finally got a hundred percent last year. It's like, why can I get back pay? Yeah. For, for 10 years yeah. because you guys fucked yeah. me for 10 years yeah. like why can't i get back like why? like the the, <laughs> the 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 idea that we can't the idea that we can't afford that when we spent five trillion dollars on the iraq war alone yeah. you can yeah, suck my I goddamn know. dick yeah. and i will burn anybody weird, to the goddamn man. ground using whatever platform i have to make it's that tough. change so that's what that's what, that's the weird thing about the veteran stuff is like sometimes good dudes just get fucked and it is. Yeah, I mean, shitty dudes get the world. That's that's it <laughs> and they still go out and complain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is and that's the is. truth. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this before we wrap up here. Um, Shot show. Shot show is one of these events because we're all here. We're all live in, in, in Vegas. It kind of brings all of us together when fuck, man. Typically, we don't get to see each other this much throughout the year. But Shot Show is one of those things where it's just like, hey, man, I know we're all going to be there. Yeah, Let's fucking hang out. And it's awesome. Yeah. Um, what does it mean to you, Jack? Being able to come out here because I know you've gotten events. Uh, fuck Wednesday nights. Um, that's, Tomorrow night, yeah. yeah, yeah Tuesday yeah. night, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I've always came out here for work. The first shot show I ever went to was for the Range Fifteen premiere. I mean, technically that was work. It was a big party, but it yeah. was still for work reasons. That was fun, man. Yeah, but it's, I associate. See, this is the thing. I'm not a big gun guy. Like, I love guns. I love shooting guns, but mm-hmm. I'm not really into hanging out with gun people. So I explain that <laughs> I love shooting guns. Mm-hmm. I love firearms. I'm very pro to two a. So, but let me just be blunt here. I hate being around a significant portion of gun people. Why is that? Cause they're like, a lot of them are like fucking veterans. Man. Because they, it's, it's, it's a fucking ideologically or it's, it's a bankrupt ideology for the most part. Like it's uh more rats. You're gonna you're gonna take my rights, yeah. And for the most part, look, there there's is some, a lot of paranoia, yeah. And it, and it's you you can't if you're gonna deal with a serious situation, and I would call a constitutional situation pretty goddamn serious. You have to deal with it with, with radi- lawyers with with radical transparency and fucking correct information yeah. and a solid argument that's not just like if, if the here, here's a good example. of This, as a matter of fact, for years and even currently. The terror watch list does not communicate with the fucking background, the handgun background check. So someone that is on the terror watch list can legally purchase a handgun in this country. That is a fucking fact. Yeah. And actually, I think here, and, and this, is, this is the fucking biggest representation of how every politician in this country is a piece of shit. On, I don't give a fuck what your ideology is. I love Dan, is. dude. I just, <laughs> like, I swear to God, like you, like when I met him, like back in the army, I was like, this motherfucker's smart. I <laughs> so, love Dan. Like, <laughs> so here's the deal. So recently, uh, Democrats tried to put up a bill that would fix that, and the Republicans canned it. And 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 the Democrats say, well, they're trying to fucking do this or do that. And uh, and it's been the case with uh, mental health bills in the past. But what really happens is. Democrats will write a bill like that and attach what's called writers to it, like additional pieces of legislation that have nothing to do with this that are fucking political agenda bullshit. And then when it doesn't get passed, they know that if it doesn't get passed, they can use the cop-out of, well, they're against fucking safety. That, that's or politicking 101 yeah. right and there, it's, yeah. That is, that is cancer, and you're a pe- all of you involved are pieces of shit, honestly. So, I mean, and, and it's... It's indicative of, like, if you, your job as a politician is to, and the job of the government at large, is to protect and defend the country and the foundation of our principles, the Constitution. That is your job. It the is, law. That the is, law of the land. Yes. Yeah. It's not to fucking make points. It's not to fucking get media exposure. And, you know, sometimes that stuff can help, but it's, it's not to push your individual ideology. It is to associate collectively and come up with the best solution for all parties involved. And that is not what happens in this country. Our political system could not possibly be more broken. And it's disappointing. And it's why, honestly, I don't know. Uh, 
when it comes to war and stuff like that, obviously the idea of just war is something I believe in. Um, but it's becoming harder and harder for me to support any kind of military action this country takes because we don't have a good track record of uh, <laughs> transparency from our government. Tran- well, transparency. And look, there's a certain amount of transparency I don't want. You know, like I don't need to know certain things. But we were lied to going into Iraq. But that, that and we, was, bought, we bought a bag full of shit. Yeah, there. That, that was all bullshit. Uh, <laughs> and honestly. And it was all for nothing, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody. Oh, every, fuck. Every, every, that, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dick. Everybody yeah. said. Everybody is talks. That the, let me ask you this. Is that the majority uh, amongst every veteran who fought in that war was, of like, I, this was bullshit? Everyone I fucking uh, know. Most people that I've talked guys I served with, and then obviously folks, that, I think everyone kind of was like, yeah, that was and here's all the, bullshit. Here's, I went through an interesting transition. To it make sucks. It sucks it. coming to that realization. <laughs> it really yeah. does. I yeah. went through it too. Like, it the, sucks coming the to that realization. realization. Here's the fallout from that realization. You get, so when you sign up to do something like that, ultimately it becomes about the men and women around you. Yeah. But, and I was a super uh, patriotic, yeah, young, yeah. idealistic yeah, yeah. man. So it, yeah. it robs you of your honor. Like, honor is something that I believe is worth dying for. Because what it represents is forgetting about yourself and doing something for other people or, or society at large. That, that's what honor is to me. And when the people that are in charge of all this present you with something that's fake, then you get home. Like guys from Vietnam, for example, if you were in World War II and you got your fucking leg blown off, you know, you, you know what? We fucking saved the world. Liberated literally. camps. Yeah. yeah. We Liberated China. When people came back with missing limbs from Vietnam, they were like, wow, my leg is gone, and why? Yeah. Like, you, if you can't answer why to a question like that, that is, that's a fucking problem. Yeah. And it robs you of your honor, in my opinion. Like, it, it's, like I said before, I know it's funny, but the Rambo thing, that is what, that's, that's what veterans want. They want to be, they want to be, and it's weird to say it that way, but they want to be loved and respected for the sacrifice that they made. And I think that's a reasonable thing to expect. And that society can't do it if the war is unjust. They can't allow themselves to do it. Even like the, the, there's, there's no more uh, like completely bankrupt phrase in the history of humankind than I support the troops. You can get fucked with that. Yeah, yeah it's, oh, it's empty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Here's what I know. You can't have, uh, you can't quote unquote support the troops and not support the war at the same time. I don't believe that, which isn't, that's not a criticism of people who don't support these wars. It's a criticism of people who send people to war unjustly. You know what I mean? And very easily yeah. when they don't have any skin in the game. Well, it's, it is easy. Yeah. I mean, fortunate son, right? Yeah. That's what it is. Credence nailed that one. So it is, I mean, it, ro- like, it robs you of everything. Your dignity. Your fucking honor. Like you, that's, that's, people don't want ribbons and awards. Dakota Meyer doesn't want a fucking Medal of Honor. Guarantee you that. Oh, yeah, look, when he was on the show, I, yeah. he said it himself. He was yeah. just like, look, man. Dakota I, just wants to make his signs and fly his helicopter. <laughs> yeah, well, I, the other part about it was he was just like, look, man, this is just a, a constant reminder of all my friends who died. Yeah. Rather than something great, they're positive. But I mean, look, if life, your friends like, died, Beating the Nazis, that's something you can deal with. Look, it still sucks, but that's something I can deal with. But the fucking dozen or, f- or so friends that I've lost and then the fucking additional fucking almost dozen now that have killed themselves post-war, like what did, wh- what was the, what did we purchase with the, their lives? $5 trillion in debt is what we purchased. I mean, it, it sucks and it's, it's, to break it all down to that is, is, it's a difficult conversation to have, but I'm tired of this goddamn cognitive dissonance that we have in this country that says I can support the troops but not the war. That's fucking bullshit. And I'm not telling people to support unjust wars. I'm telling people that you get one shot as a politician, no matter what you're, how, how uh, powerful you are, you get one shot. If you fuck up, you're done, in my mind. Like Bush, fuck him. He seems like a nice guy. Ellen likes him, but he can get fucked. 
Dick Cheney is a piece of shit. I hope he fucking kills himself. Get, uh, you know uh, what uh, I mean? Have we I, gone I, over the top here, or can I? No. You know, like I just want to. I was just going to see like, what like, the show you is. Know, I, I think you know, like forever, Dan man. talked. Dude, I I went through such a weird fucking transitional period. So like I was like so Dan and I were in the same unit and like we got fucked up over there. But then now over the years, like we've lost more people to suicide, I think, than we've lost to um, then the but, actual um, war itself, right? Yeah, but when he's <laughs> dude. Making peace with, you know, uh, dude, after I, after I, like, I was just, a, I was a fucking drone, man. When I was in the army, I was a drone. I was like, I'll go fucking kill anyone anywhere. I don't give a shit. This is what I want to do. And then after I got shot, I started reading books and stuff. I was like, ooh. And it's easy to convince ooh, 19, we, 20, 20 <laughs> one year olds to go do all that crazy shit. There's a reason yeah. why you don't see a lot of 30 year olds doing that kind of right, bullshit, right, right? right, right. You've had a little time to think about life. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird like that, right? Like, cause they they'll get you real young. Yeah, cause you're you're idealistic. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I but I had to make my peace. But at that point, I'd fucking like lost my shit, lost my life, and that's what I wanted to do. And I had to make my peace with, you know. So like, dude, I went through a I went through a super I went through like a two year anti American phase, I think after I got shot, and I was just I was just upset. I was super mad, and I, our country isn't perfect. But, it's okay to talk <laughs> shit about your country. Dude, that's so, a, that's the biggest problem I have but, is when people like don't yeah. allow. Like, I, it's I okay think, to talk shit about I think, your country. I think Dan showed We're up. Not perfect. With a lot of knowledge to the unit, and that's you know, like it was like we were like Dan, you're different from us you know because you came in when you were like 24 or 25 or something yeah Yeah. and we were all like 90 we were just like straight out of high school fucking soldiers like yeah we don't have education i don't know what the fuck you're this shit is you're talking like america's great so i was just saying after i got shot dude i like the army made like i was on my own yeah i got shot and they sent me and i was just off on my own and i was like what the fuck and i started reading books about american history Mm. and then the war like what led up to the war in iraq and i was like i don't i was like oh shit we got lied to yeah and i fucking got my i lost my leg for this shit and it's like why did i do that and i made my peace with it because just like you guys i was like well i was an able body and I yeah. like I, I I was like I was just a soldier at heart. I think you know. Yeah, it's that's kind of a, that's what I was kind of a say. weird thing. It's like you, people ask me a why, soldier at heart. You people know? ask me why, knowing all that, I joined anyways during the time of war. I was like, because that's who I am. Like it's it's not my responsibility to avoid war. Yeah, because. A, a government that's shady. My, it's my responsibility to fight. Yeah, like They're, like right or wrong, no matter what. At the end of the day, it's like, ah, oh, shit, man. I'm a soldier at heart, yeah. and I'm not. I'm not here. I don't make the decisions. I didn't send. I didn't send me to war. No. <laughs> you know? yeah. there's, and there's nothing you can do <laughs> to I'll, stop. But I'll be next to you and you yeah. when your guys are in the shit and mm. doing it, and that's it. That like that's it. There's it nothing was, you can do to stop yeah. it either. You're always gonna have 17, 18 year olds. We're going to want to have their little Hemingway experiences, right? <laughs> yeah. They're always going to want to go out there and fuck <laughs> shit up, right? Even if it lasts for a short period of their life. Like you're, yeah. you're going to have young people that always want to go out on an adventure, whether it's fucking morally right or not. Yeah. Like, it also depends on what time you were born, right? Because sometimes there is no conflict in the world. So like when not I in was America. Up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but when I was, we always got someone to fight. Yeah. When, when I was in high school, and I said that there was no conflict. There was no nothing. And it was, uh, you know. 2001 with with, with 9 11 yeah. because it's, you know, the majority of the people we have on the show, I would say 90 percent of them. When you ask them why they joined, they were like, ah, 2011, right? I mean, uh, 2000, uh, n- November 11th. Yeah, yeah, yep, two, two, yeah. So, September dude, 11th. like, and that's and that, dude. Here, here's a funny thing with me. I've been me. drinking, Dan. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like September 11, 2000, September 2001. 11th, Jesus, dude. Sorry. I was, I was. Uh, you know, it's funny. Like when um, uh, September 11th, I showed up to school and I was high on ketamine. Mm. I didn't do like I like when it would like the people are like, why did you join the army? And they 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 think you should give this like I believe Romantic, in country, I, I believe yeah. in God and country stuff like that. Yeah. Like, no, I was just a lost dude. And I started working out when I was 17 and it was like fitness and physical challenges that led me to the army. I, I watched the um, the the first bomb, like the shock and awe in Iraq. And I was just like stoned as fuck. Yeah. Helping my friend doing chemistry homework. I was like, I don't give a fuck about this shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like this is I, I li- I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. That's mm-hmm. all I knew and cared about, mm-hmm. you know. I yeah, it's like but I um I joined the army for personal reasons you know and then i'd be but then i you know went to basic and airborne and i was like i fucking love this shit and i love these guys and yeah so 
it was weird after I got shot, I had to make peace with what happened to me. And I was, I was upset with why we went to war and stuff, but I was like, Hey, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm down, man. Like, cause these guys are going to be there kind of like, like they don't get a say in it and stuff like that. Mm. And it's like, I was, I always said like, you know, I was, um, an able body. I was an able body. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it brings to question what our responsibility is as a society in this, because we have the power we have, and then we don't have the power we don't have. Right. So, uh, there's, there's a couple of key issues I think that, that are, uh, that are black and white. And that is, if you're going to send somebody to war, there should be a just reason for it because we are the result of war and, uh, this, the struggles, all the, all the, the chaos and the carnage, that's the result of war. Even even the best possible outcome. That is the yeah, result we of went, war. Yeah, we went. Like, I got my fucking leg shot off to shut down fucking Sodder. And yeah. he's still Who's now, there. No, no, he's, he's not. motherfucking still he's there. He's not just Dude, still I there. He's so in the. Mad. He's in the. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, he's I get a, so mad. <laughs> he's a, he is a member of the Iraqi parliament now. Yeah. And, and, he, and he, we they, were there to fucking came, shut those motherfuckers yeah. down. And they came very yeah. close to. Uh, to For him being prime minister yeah. at one point. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Uh, that's the democracy so did, we so wanted to I, give him. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is and it isn't. The reason that he's that his party got so close is because of Iranian involvement. But look, I mean, we're always like, you, I've heard arguments like I'm trying to give the government the benefit of the doubt because yeah. who knew X, Y, and Z was going to happen? Well, yeah. Charlie Wilson knew it. If you don't know who he is, he was a fucking congressman from Texas. Tom right? Hanks. And yeah, Charlie Wilson's war. <laughs> yeah. No, for real, he played him in in a fucking great movie. Yeah. Uh, and Charlie Wilson was the key person in uh, training and arming the Mujahideen in Afghanistan against Russians in the 1970s yeah. and 80s. Right. So. Yeah. After I got they, shot, I read all those books. I was yeah. like, Wow. He he or, he orchestrated <laughs> with the CIA. He orchestrated this fucking a massive amount of money getting pushed into the air, and he. There, there isn't anyone on earth that's more solely responsible for breaking the back of the Soviet Union than Charlie Wilson. Yep. And when it was over, when the Soviets finally pulled out, he went back to the committees and asked for money for education. Like, hey, if we don't teach these people what we did for them and teach them what modern society can be, then they're going to go back to caveman bullshit and hate us immediately. And they were like, eh, get fucked. Yeah. All of Congress pretty yeah. much told him to get fucked. And... So the idea that we don't know that disrupting a situation like that creates a power vacuum in which hate and bile is stimulated by poverty and will ultimately turn against us in a major way, that's fucking nonsense. It just happened. Literally just happened. And not only did we do it again, but we did it a third time in 30 years. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's money. It's got to be, right? Like, there's not, I don't, I don't think that, Dick Cheney is an evil person necessarily. I don't. I don't think that. Like, because look, he fabricated. Not fabricated. He he aligned truths and half truths in a way that made it look like it was a good idea to invade Iraq. He and others, right? Uh, and of course, he had a vested interest in that because he owned Halliburton. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. So it's like uh, <laughs> Halliburton is for those of you out there in the military community that don't know KBR. Yeah, they own, they own that. Massive, so every piece of food yeah. you ate in the fucking Middle yeah. East. Yeah came from them i mean it's like and everything else too so i have to assume that it's profit motive right like the idea that there is profit motive and things like health care and things war like war has always been a racket since the 19th century smedley butler the war is a yeah, racket yeah, yeah like it's always been part of the american mo to yeah. stir up shit that doesn't exist as much as we think it does yeah. and make a buck off of it well you know well, how much- it, it profits our economy a lot because it provides a lot of jobs to build Things to go overseas and everything else. It does. The, the problem is when it costs uh, ninety dollars for a hammer. You know what I mean. And it's mm. the problem is when it costs twenty seven dollars bucks for a hand job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the hey, pro- the nobody pro- needs that more than Jack Mandeville. The, the problem is also <laughs> the problem is also when it costs uh, twenty seven dollars to get a single aspirin in a hospital. You know what I mean. Like if you, I don't want to go off on a bunch of political rants. We've been we've done enough at this point, but. Uh, and I'm not necess- I don't I don't think Medicare for all is a great deal. Like the numbers just don't add up, but uh the idea in this country that we tell people that they can be as healthy as they can afford to be is about the most morally bankrupt thing I've ever heard in my life. Like that's what does that even mean? Yeah. Like how do you look 
That that's like old school Roman I like plebeian ideology. Like here's your fucking bread. Watch these people kill each other. Then we're gonna go drink wine and eat grapes in our mansion. Like get fucked, guy. <laughs> like that's not happening on my watch. Uh and that's what we've done. That's why both sides of this argument, the Republicans for trying to stop healthcare reform from happening, and Obama, who's a giant cunt, by the way, because the idea that he, he was some kind of fucking liberal hero, this motherfucker put forth the Affordable Care Act, which was nothing more than a handout to insurance companies. That's all it was. They didn't do anything to reform the pharma, uh, pharma, uh, pharma industry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, none of that shit happened. And then when it came time to protect things like uh, birth control, which, like, it, it makes sense. He fucking caved immediately. That guy is a fucking giant pussy. And I'm glad he's not. <laughs> I love Dan, dude. I fucking love Dan. I, don't, I, don't, I fucking love I don't Dan. love everything that Trump does. I, in fact, I would say 60% of the shit he says is fucking stupid. But the, <laughs> but the fact that he just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, if you come to Trump with uh, a good idea, he's going to try to make it happen regardless of what it is. Yeah. Obama would try to make it happen if it was politically expedient. You saw that with Hillary Clinton as well. She mm-hmm. was against marriage equality until 2013 when it became politically advantageous to do that. Mm. Like, oh, yeah? She was for the Iraq War, right? Yep. For domestic spying. I'm not sure about that. Yes. Yeah. She, was, she, she takes more money from uh, Big Pharma than any other political candidate in American history, right? And then this other thing. And she was the liberal hero against Trump. No, yeah. no, you're just fucking. You know, you know it's, she's not a liberal. She's no. Democrat. She's not a liberal. No, not even close. <laughs> not even close. Uh, it's uh, all done. Point the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Um, uh, Jack, we'll, we'll, we'll give it to you this time. I got one. Yeah, I've never met this guy before. Really? Yeah. He, and this is the thing. I don't follow meme pages. Like I think, like, but he's got a little meme page. His name. He's a drinking bro. He's in the group. His name's John Leisure. Okay. He's got an Instagram handle called Woke Johnny Bravo, and it's just the most ratchety shit on earth. I love it so much. I don't. <laughs> I don't really get into like meme. I like you know. Like I watch stand up if I want to. If I want to get a laugh, or I will watch like my friends' funny videos. Sure. But like, it's just good shitty ratchety ass memes on there yeah that's funny yeah i'm pretty sure he's on the spectrum so he just goes for it man for it man, for it, man. Yeah. yeah same <laughs> so. john leisure from tennessee i'll i've never met this guy but i'll just randomly uh uh facetime him and everything like that like, like last time i facetime him he was outside of a bar smoking a cigarette and he go hey look man some guy puked right there earlier like that was my conversation about some guy's puke yeah <laughs> Oh, man. You, look, you're one of the funniest people we follow. It's, it's, tell everybody your Instagram real quick before we get out of here. It's uh, Jack Mandeville, J-A-C-K-M-A-N-D-A-V-I-L-L-E. And the best part about it is, is you send us videos that you can't post. Right. Yeah, my, I Jack's, my Jack's you know, you know, you're laughing. Thing but, I, but, I, but, I, but I also sent the um, the Some videos that I can't post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you get my, one, the, my Porky Pig one? Great, yeah. Derek. Uh, where can everybody find you? I'm just Derek Whita everywhere. Derek Whita on Instagram, Facebook, DerekWhita.com on the internet there. Yeah. And your new workout fucking program is the goddamn best. It's Where can truth. everybody go to that? It's 20 bucks. DerekWhita.com. There's yes. a bunch of training programs online. If you want to know how I work out, how I do fitness, it's right there. It's available. <laughs> yeah. It's great, but everybody's doing it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's yeah. using your program. I feel like it's you're like super famous. A couple thousand people. I don't know. That's pretty good, right? Yes. Like, yeah. It's great. No, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. And they talk to me about like like people are like, oh, I thought I was in shape. And so I started, started doing this. And I was like, yeah, fitness is interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Jack, I can like Jack, Jack. If you want to get in shape, Jack, everybody wants to be like semi in shape. Even Jack, I don't Jack. know. I Jack. don't know if it fits your whole persona. Jack, I will. I will be your personal Jack. I will be your personal trainer for free. Mm, Are you crushing it, the pussy it, game? It's slowed down just because. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's or, crazy. Do you want? Do you want? Do you want Jared Pussy or do you want good pussy? No, I wasn't getting Jared Pussy. Jared, like, I'm a man, but I realized uh, by, the end, by the time the summer was closing down, like Jared's a bad influence when it comes to women. Like terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't realize this is like this is like, like, oh, hey, Jack. Awful. If you want to move on from Jared Pussy to good pussy, yeah. like yeah. I'll be your coach. All right, like <laughs> yeah, Jack. I would like like no shit right here on the show. Like I'll coach you for free. 
Yeah, if you want to get in shape and listen to and that. Yeah, right yeah. yeah. All right. DerekWida.com. Yeah. And, and then we'll sell the Jack Mandeville program. <laughs> Goddamn right, dude. If you made Jack ripped <laughs> yeah. up in a six I know. Pack, like, what if we got be Jack like in shape? Tony Robbins. If, if dude, we learned how to, than Tony Robbins. Like, it was like, hey, <laughs> you, don't ha- you don't have to drink any less. Like, we'll figure it out. We'll have yeah. it. Yeah. I yeah. There it is. I feel like if you yeah. got all cut oh up. Oh, my would, God, Jack. I feel like if you got all cut up, it would be kind of like Carrot Top, though. It's no. like out of place. You know what I mean? It's Maybe. Like, yeah, you don't expect it. It's like really nice rims on a piece of shit car. <laughs> I never wanted a thin Chris Farley, right? By the way, you're the piece of shit car in that. <laughs> right you know? Right, yeah. 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 Uh, fun show, kids. Uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, Jack Manneville, Derek Wyda, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.